Hi everyone, my name is Gwenda. I'm one of the customer success managers here at Mix Panel. So today I would like to take you guys through some of the key product features that we have shipped in the past few weeks and months. Okay, so, so these are the three um, product features that we will be talking about today. The first one is lift across our insights, funnels and retention reports. The second one is viewing users and being able to create cohorts out of these users very easily. And lastly, some of the faster workflows that we have implemented to allow you to, uh, you know, toggle against um, different reports very easily and play around mix panel um, very easily as well. So again, the aim of all these features really is to allow you to view data in a more robust manner while simultaneously making mix panel um, a really seamless and intuitive experience. So diving straight into the dashboard. So today we have, we have um, the e-commerce um, demo dashboard. So this is a de demo data that we will be using today. So um, firstly, we will be looking at the insights report. So um, let's just quickly put in an event. Let's say complete purchase. So um, the lift feature actually allows you to compare data in a more robust manner. What I mean is that you're able to compare data across different time periods. You're able to compare data against um, the breakdown level. You're able to compare data against any arbitrary segments as well. So um, let's just jump into this. We're looking at complete purchase in the last 30 days. So what we want to do is, for example, we want to be able to compare against the previous month. So this is what we can do. You can see here, the darker line shows you the um, current trend of complete purchases, whereas the dotted line shows you the performance of complete purchases in the past month. So what we can do is click on this left icon here. It gives you the percentage change over the baseline, right? So we are able to very easily tell on a particular day, like for example, March 11, we are seeing a 190% increase from the previous month of 11 February. So this gives you a very good idea and very easy way for you to understand how your business is growing and whether it's doing well, what it's not doing so well, for example. Talking about lift at a breakdown level, let's just take this down. Um, for example, your business is you know active across a variety of different cities or country. What we can do is we can put in let's say city, right? And then this will give us all the cities that you know um, data is coming in from. Let's just take away undefined in this case, for example. So we are seeing like a variety of different cities and their data. Um, if we want to, you know, there is over 3,000 cities here. Let's just say we want to compare it to Kansas City, um, Shanghai, Cairo, Beijing, Moscow maybe, Taipei, right? So um, this is just an example. If we want to compare it, we can compare it against segment as well. So what this means is that, for example, if we are using Beijing as our baseline, we want to be able to see um, how is the other cities um, doing in comparison to Beijing. So you can see very clearly, this is the line, this is our control line, and then this are uh, how the other cities are performing. So at every point you're able to see, okay, so um, Kansas City is not performing so well, it's a negative 18% compared to Beijing. And then at this point, you can see that, you know, Cairo on this particular day is performing slightly better with an increase of 16.67%. So again, this is a good way for you to compare arbitrary segments, but it's also a good way if you're doing an A-B test as well. So you have the control line here, and then you're able to see you know, which test variant is doing better than the other as well. Before we move on to lift and funnels, I just want to quickly bring your attention to the second feature that I previously mentioned, which is the global... Um, view users. So what we can do here really is if you if you see at any point on the chart or in any matrix, once you click into it, what we can do is really very easily view users at a certain point. So we can see that at this point in time, we have about eight, 14,800 users in this particular segment. So with this view users data, what we can do is we can easily create a cohort out of this um, 
uses or we can export a csv file very easily as well so once you click into it you'll be able to export the file oh yeah just not able to do it so yes yeah, so once you click into csv file a csv file will be automatically um downloaded for you another thing that is good about viewing users at, sh at such um a click of a button is that once you see this list of users you can easily go into this particular user profile and be able to view what are some of the activities that they have done so for example you know does this person has searched for an event a search for a product for example you know went into an item um, page and then completed purchase as well. So these are some of the useful um, activities and events that you can look at by using view users. So moving on to left in the funnels report. So um, let's just put in a funnel conversion. Let's say um, search to complete purchase. Right. So we can see that, you know, um, from search to complete purchase, uh, the overall conversion is at about 84%. So what we want to do is be able to understand how does this compare to, again, the previous time period, let's say the previous month. So we're able to see that, you know, uh, we're able to see very quickly by clicking on to lift here that, you know, the conversion against um, the previous month baseline has decreased by about 9%. So this gives us, uh, you know, using the button, very easily understanding what the conversion rate looks like and how your um, conversion funnel is performing uh, against each time period that you're looking at. Another way to look into it as well is very easily understanding your onboarding funnel. So let's say your onboarding is signing up and then, um, joining a particular loyalty program and maybe adding payment method right so we are able to see the conversion so this is the um let's say the onboarding funnel and let's put the date range in the past seven days we can compare it to the time period of your choice let's say the previous week and then we can choose lift to see week on week what the conversion is looking like as well in terms of your onboarding funnel so this is a really easy and flexible way for you to look at the percentage changes in terms of your metrics so again um infusing it with the second product feature of viewing users that we talked about previously as well for example we can see here sign up to join loyalty program we have only about 59 percent conversion so we are wondering who are the 40% users who have dropped off? What we can do here is easily click into this, view the users who have dropped off and be able to create a cohort out of it or export a CSV file. So again, this is a really easy and fast way for you to identify your users who have not converted and be able to, for example, send them an email telling them to join this loyalty program that you have or creating some sort of incentive for them to join the loyalty program. So again, it's an easy way for you to identify what are some of the root causes of drop off and be able to target this specific group of users. Lastly, we can look at left in terms of retention as well. So um, let's change the second step to complete purchase. So this is the retention in terms of users who have signed up and then returning to complete purchase, right? So um, we're looking at a seven day date range. So what we want to do is be able to compare it against different cohorts as well, for example. So we can use the breakdown feature in this case. So we, for example, you want to understand whether retention for certain users who um you know let's say join the loyalty program so whether what the retention rate actually looks like so in this case you can easily tell off the bat that you know um the retention is much higher for shoppers who have joined your loyalty program versus those who are not in your who are not new to the loyalty program all we can do is we can actually compare it um let's put a baseline as you know users who are not new to the loyalty program and we're able to see very clearly what the percentage um, change is with regards to retention so again this is a very helpful way for you to see um, how well your retention efforts are doing um, what are some of the retention metrics that we should be looking at again we can look at it in terms of absolute values or percentages here as well
And lastly, um, we are also able to view users very easily um, on the retention report as well. So if, for example, if you click onto a particular group of um, users on let's say day two, right? We're able to have a quick view in terms of who the users are. Let's just take this off. We're able to see, okay, this is the retention curve. We can see at every point of the retention curve, we're able to see which are the group of users who have retained and which are the group of users that have dropped off. So this is a very good and specific case. So you're able to find out um, specifically the, both groups of users um, in this case after signing up who have dropped off or who have come back to make a purchase, right? So again, this data is able to guide you to make some meaningful actions in terms of emailing your users with a note to help them come back and convert and make a purchase. And for example, for your retained users, um, get them to come back and make another purchase again. So these are some of the um, benefits and the use cases you can use in terms of viewing users at such a click in point. So far, we have talked about um, left feature across all the core reports that we have. We've also talked about how we can view users very easily at the click of a button. So the last one I want to talk about is faster workflows. So what we have implemented is actually the undo and redo shortcuts and feature. So what does this mean is if I come into this report, retention report, and I'm looking into, you know, um, let's say I want to filter by retention by a specific um, item category, let's say books. Um, and then I've also put in uh, another feature like, um, you know, breakdown of country. So this, this is like different ways that I can play around with the report, right? However, if I want to go back to my most original state of report, what I can do is basically click on the undo button. Otherwise, um, another thing that we can do on the keyboard, if you're using Mac, for example, is using the Command-Z button. So again, let's say um, that's what I've done. I've done the Command-Z button and it has taken away the item category filter that I have just put on. However, if I want to redo it, I can very easily redo it again. So I can click here and then I can click Redo, or I can use it on my MacBook shortcut and do Command-Shift-Z. And then now I can see the breakdown of all the different countries as well. Right. So um, this allows you to really, you know, play around with mixed panel without the fear of losing your original state of report as well. So this is one of the features that I've implemented that allows you to quickly undo and redo. Um, the second one that I want to talk about is fluid report transition as well. So if I'm looking at the retention report and I want to quickly um, go into the funnel report, I can just click into funnels. And as you can see, all the steps that I have from the retention report and the filter that I have, as well as the breakdown I have, is actually brought into the funnel report without you having to click on the filter button again, click on the breakdown button again. So again, this allows you to navigate the di different report versions very easily and very quickly as well. So you can start building a report or start, start building your data at any point across any report and then this will be reflected against all the other reports, right? So um, again, if I'm looking at, you know, um, Funnels, I'm wondering why is there such a big drop off? I want to look into insights. How I can very easily uh, be able to identify, um, you know, where the drop offs are, what the first time filters are as well. Okay, so taking it all down again, the last feature that I want to talk about is being able to drag and drop query blocks very easily. So, for example, let's go with the example of item category again. We have different um, categories, for example, here. What I want to do is I want to be able to, you know, um, drag it very quickly and drag it into the filter filter version here. So um, let's try again. So I can, I can easily bring it from the breakdown into filter so that I am able to, so that I don't have to, you know, go in and search for the, the exact same filter again. So I can just bring it up to filter and then be able to filter by, let's say, item category equals to books, right? So this is what we have in the global filter. But if we want to do an inline filter, so if we want 
um, specifically looking at complete purchases or let's say let's just put in another um, category of item detail page as my event so we can bring this down so easily you can you can re rearrange the different event um, data and query that you have and let's say I want to be only looking at the books category of item detail page I can bring this up and then create an inline filter very easily as well so um, again this is um, implemented with with um, our customers in mind in terms of allowing them to use Mixpanel very intuitively and seamlessly. So that's it for all the fe new features that um, we have. Um, these are some of the key features that we have. Um, do play around with it. Have a look at it. If there's any feedback, do let me know or let Jess know and I'll be happy to walk you through some of them as well. Thanks everyone. I hope this is helpful.